and I'm going to record this. Um, it's going to be pretty fast and some of you may want to go back over some of this information again later. Um, I was reflecting on some of the questions that came in the chat on Monday when we were together doing our Desmos about inequalities. And I thought we should do a little bit of some background info. So I know that this was not the first time you've seen inequalities. Um, I want to say it's third grade that they're typically introduced first. But when they're introduced in earlier years, it's just numbers typically. So it'll be something like seven is less than 12. Or four is greater than two. And now that we've moved into um, seventh grade math, we start seeing things like X is less than 12. Or four is greater than or equal to Y. The variable might change, but this is what we call an algebraic inequality because we're using a variable instead of numbers. There was a comment made in the chat that really kept me reflecting over the last day and a half, waiting to see you all again, around um, something not being a right answer. And I realized we hadn't talked about the word true. And the word true is used more often than inequality, with inequalities than right or wrong answer. So this inequality is true. Seven is less than 12. If I wrote this inequality the other way, 12 is less than seven, you would all tell me that's not true, that it doesn't work. And so this would be called a false inequality or not true. So when we're dealing with algebraic inequalities, we're trying to find values that make them true. So when I look at this inequality, x is less than 12, the inequality up above it works. x could be 7. What are some other numbers that X could be in this inequality to make it true? Go ahead and add some to the chat. What are some other numbers that X could be to still make that inequality true? Matthew said one, Bernadette said 11, Jawan's got a whole list. It could be one, two, four, five, six. Uh, Melee is and Arish both said anything less than 12. And what I see from Melee and Arish is basically taking this inequality and putting it into words. We're saying that this X is any number less than 12. And as you can start to see by what we have from Jawan, this nice list where we can include other people's numbers. And I see some more people have added to the chat. Um, oh, good, Lily. Lily said one through 11. And I'm gonna ask you to keep thinking about Lily's answer there as I show you how we'd like to show answers for inequalities because it just starts to be a lot to start to list them all. And so if I have the inequality X is less than 12 and I'm trying to find values that could make this inequality true, we like to use a number line. And you all discovered a lot of things about that number line in the Desmos on Monday. When we're writing inequality number lines, I often just do a quick snapshot. I make sure that the number I'm going to want to put a circle on is on there and a number below it and above it. 
So picture like taking that magnifying glass on a document and zooming in. I've just zoomed in on this number line. I'm including the important number. I'm going to circle 12 because it's the number here. And I'm going to draw an arrow to the left. I'm going to use a highlighter just because my pen is a little difficult to see. And you were all doing this the other day in our activity. And it was making sense. But I want you to now think about it and making sense by looking at all of these values up above that we were listing. Is seven somewhere on this number line in the yellow part? Are one, two, four, five, six, eleven. All of those are, are there. But it also goes beyond what Lily said here, because Lily basically was picturing a number line, I'm guessing, right, Lily? What about negative 12? Would negative 12 make this inequality true? Would negative 100? And so that's where we start to think about the word infinite because this number line goes on and on and on to the left and every number we could start to think of could go there. But now I'm gonna take you back to a part of our activity the other day that I thought was really insightful. This was our second screen. And the question was, what is the shortest height Michaela can be and still ride both rides? And a lot of people, put in the number 61. And a few of you, I remember I took this screenshot from Prehensha, but she wasn't the only one. A few people had done this, put 60.1. Because the directions here said that it has to be greater than or equal to for this one, and just greater than for this one. So as long as she's somewhere above 60, then it works. And if I did this on a number line, I'd get 59, 60, 61. I'd have to circle 60 and go to the right. I didn't mean for that to be inside that circle there. I just messed up my number line. Try that again. I remember saying to you all on Monday that both answers were right. Both 61 and 60.1, wow, that's really poor writing, could be true numbers that are put in here. This 60.1 would just be really close to 60 and 61 would be our next largest whole number. And so these are both things that would make it true, but the absolute shortest height would be something really, really, really close to 60, but with a decimal. So with that, I wanna give you guys a little bit of insight into what's gonna to happen tomorrow. Uh, we are at a place in Mr. Kraft's time with us where he is going to take over quite a bit of our teaching. Um, and he's going to be being observed tomorrow by his university supervisor. Um, and there, we're going to do an activity tomorrow that's a follow up to Mondays. But before I feel you're ready for it, I think today is a day for us to go to Flowcabulary. Ha, Arish sent me in the chat. It could be less than 60.1 as well, so there's an infinite range. You're right, Arish. I was thinking that this, it would be something like 60.00000001, right? Just as long as you're a smidge taller than 60. And we've all seen kids at, at parks on their tippy toes trying to prove that they're just above that line. 
Okay, let me get to my screen share again. I need you all to go to Google Classroom. And in classwork, I have posted a FlowCab inequalities that I'd like you all to click on. It's going to require you to sign in with your Google account. And because vocabulary is really something I want you to do at your own pace, I'm not going to show the video on here. Oops, that's not where I wanted to be. Sorry about this. Here we go. There is a video on inequalities, and it covers some of the things that we just talked about and some of the things that we talked about on Monday. Watch it once or twice, or maybe even three times. And then you're going to do the vocabulary cards and the quiz. Uh, this will be something that I put in Skyward. Uh, you'll have until next week to complete it. But to be ready for Mr. Kraft's lesson tomorrow, it would be really helpful if you've done the video and the vocab cards before we're back together tomorrow. So it's been a while since we've done a room choice activity, but we have one today for the next 12 minutes. And I'm gonna ask you for the first time in a while to change your names to be in the room that you would like to be in. 